new painting. So, yep, another one for the show, and I got an idea what I'm going to do. This one's not going to be an important thing. This is going to be a fun, fun painting. Okay, so I'm going to actually add a lot of black mm. or Prussian blue too. Get our handy dandy sponge out here real quick. Get the carbon black really neat. Might have to re-up the white too, but we'll see. Okay, let me get my handy dandy uh, sponge out here. And spray it down too first so it flows. Another 30 by 40 canvas. Move this out of the way here. I always have to move it over. I've been just fascinated with the uh, web uh, images that have been coming out. It's just like, wow. I think that, you know, I think what's so sad is this, this is what humans can do. You know, and God, we just do it. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same here. Put that in there. So, right from here, I'm gonna get a new. And we're done. No, just kidding. <laughs> the celestial body is closer to us. So I'm going to just start right in. Got my light here.
brown. A little bit of, uh, of course, I won't be able to find it. Van Dyke brown. To it here. I'll actually turn that back on too. this real quick unplug it's so funny uh, the, the lid gets so plugged so what i do is this pull 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 yeah that didn't work you know that's not gonna work there we go see plug comes out <laughs> Just about the dead horse here. Uh, I don't know where they get that term dead horse, but that's kind of an accurate one here. Awesome. That's congratulations. Awesome. Awesome. Seriously, congratulations on that. It always feels good when you complete something, doesn't it? Ah. How are you doing tonight, Merrick? Well, obviously you're doing good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
And you can see I have paint all over my hands. That's all right. Add some more white here and I have to be careful because I have a tendency to kind of just uh, I need a uh, it's called laziness <laughs> the key is not to drop this thing did that one time oh that was a mess and plus a huge waste of paint Ugh. there we go Managed to do it. Didn't waste anything. All right. <laughs> yeah, I, I wish I could be down for your uh, uh, um, uh, sale and pride, but uh, I will not be here. <laughs> so, yeah. I, mean, yeah. I hope you do some recording of it. That would be awesome. Add a little more yellow ochre, yellow ochre. Got my pal's book one done yesterday. Yeah, I sent it to him. I haven't heard any response from him. You know, they have in the past responded pretty quickly, but uh, I don't know. Maybe they don't like the War of the Worlds concept. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not going to worry about it. I had something about it. Queen Elizabeth passing away today. Gosh, boys, they said 90% of the British people, uh, she's always been their queen. Yeah, <laughs> my computer's are both in a fantastic thing and scary thing. <laughs> yeah, it was like, well, well she's always... Hell, you realize that Truman was president when she ascended to the throne. God. You know, Winston Churchill was her first prime minister. God. You think about that. That's just incredible. That's going to be the biggest funeral I think we're going to see in our lives when she passes, when they do the funeral. God, it says 10 days after her death is when the funeral occurs. It's already been planned, you know, so. Yeah, she's boy, man, on the throne forever. Yeah, Charles, uh, now Charles III, you know, uh, you know, he, he's already 73, so it there's no way he's going to be on the throne any time near what that she had. But you never know. These people live a long time, and uh, he might be on the throne for as much as 20 years. Who knows? <laughs> God.
No, it was amazing. Just two days before her death, she uh, brought in the next prime minister. It was her 15th prime minister. God, that, talk about just being on the throne forever. I don't know, there's a certain advantage to that. You know, you know we, we fought against kings and stuff like that, but sometimes I wonder, you know, there's a certain advantage to that. She's like, um, uh, she, uh, you know, kind of wrote out crises. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can see why. Darken that up now. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. I was going to do it. I was looking at something for like a Portland theme, but I, for tonight, Portland themed sci fi, but I wasn't coming up with it. So I decided I should get this one done. I had this in mind. And then, uh, uh, yeah, probably, probably come Sunday, I might be able to start that one. One more Portland theme. I think that'd be kind of cool, cool for the science fiction stuff. So you'll see Portland themes, themes and everything. seen Pat in a long time on here. Always, anytime I be scrubbing, I always think of her. <laughs> I haven't seen Layton on here in a long time either. Yeah. Always worry about. I know Pat's gone through some traumatic moments, so I'm not saying anything, you know. But. Uh, but it was nice seeing quite a few people last night. Really enjoyed that. Susan's been going through some health issues. She told me about it. I, I inquired with her, how, how are you doing? I knew she was going through. Uh, oh, yeah. No, she was a, definitely a stabilizing force. I always remember... When she asked the British uh, Broadcasting Company if she could dress the nation, and they had not had that because normally the, the, the monarch addresses the nation at holiday times and, you know, some things where the government asks them to do something. And she wanted to address the nation, and, and she, uh, it was over um, when Scotland was talking about succeeding from uh, the, uh, of England, and uh, and she asked to address the nation, and uh, they said that speech alone kept Scotland Scotland united with uh, England. I thought that was so funny. You know, they they said, "Well, mum, you know, they 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 actually rank you know the most effective speeches in history, and obviously one of them was uh, you know Churchill's. We'll fight them in the beaches. You know, we'll never surrender." With uh, uh, one of the speeches, and then another one was goes all the way back to Pope Urban II when he actually launched all the crusades. But uh, but they said her speech was in the top ten. <laughs> and they, and uh, when she addressed the nation, uh, the, the, the British Broadcasting Company says, we have, you know, and they said it went out to the Commonwealth and everything, and, 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 and the speech was something like over a billion viewers. It was like a music... And they said, only Elizabeth can do that. Only Elizabeth. <laughs> and then remember the COVID speech she gave, you know, and it was so much better than the, the crap that we had, you know, and she was uh, asked to dress the nation to calm the nation when the COVID uh, crisis hit. I mean, she, she was, she was a, a remarkable person. I mean, really remarkable Oh, 
I always remember that speech. I always remember that speech over at Scotland, and she was standing. She used to always stand when she addressed the nation, and the cameras would roll in. Said the Queen wants to talk to you, and, and everybody's like, "Going, well, Mom wants to talk to us." You know? and, and they, 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 they said in Britain alone, it was a ninety-six percent of viewership. They said no one. And they said absolutely no one gets a ninety-six percent viewership. They said any politicians would have been smacking their lips to have that type of. of uh, Viewership. They said only Elizabeth can do that, and uh, and when she and I always remember that she would, she would, went like this. I have some concerns I want to share with you, <laughs> and that they said, I was it. You know, said the entire everybody was locked in. You know, at that point, you know, I have some concerns I want to talk to you about. And she, she's God. Uh, I watched that speech. Because they said it's un- what well, it was unprecedented, and I happened to be up, and they co- they, they covered it live on whatever channel I don't know what channel it was, but and it was like I have some concerns I want to talk to you about. <laughs> and they said, "Mom, just address the nation." <laughs> kind of scolded the nation, but was friendly at the same time. <laughs> God, I have some concerns. <laughs> And they said only Elizabeth could get, get away with that. She would have been any politician, they would have flayed him alive. <laughs> All right. Oh, of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I need to develop her a lot more. I, I think as we get more time and stuff like that, I, I'll, I'll develop her a lot more. Olivia. <laughs> I have some concerns. <laughs> oh, I'll never forget that. I think everybody was like, what? oh, dear. <laughs> They said every prime minister was terrified of her. <laughs> she was formidable. Hello, Mavis. How are you doing? <laughs> we were a little bit talking about Elizabeth's uh, passing today. Yeah, she was. Well, she'll go down the history. That's no, no question about that. That's going to be the, in my lifetime, that's probably going to be the biggest funeral ever. Remember, I forget what bill it was, but the parliament wanted to pass and she she did it in her own way because a, a, a monarchy is not supposed to uh, you know influence a bill or whatever it is, and she made the comment to a, the prime minister, "I would think about that before I would do that," and they said that the bill was dead on the floor. <laughs> that was all it took. She says, "I would think I would think about that before you do that." And they said, "I was it bill dead." They said any hint that uh, she didn't like something. Enough. Uh, they, well, we're done. <laughs> yeah, she had a lot more power than I think a lot of people realize. She had that persuasive power. Yeah, we got it. We got a gas giant going on here, as you can see. We're gonna, and and the sunlight's obviously coming this direction, so we will get this in here. <laughs> And I said she was one of the most, um, uh, she had, you know, she, they actually, would, she actually would read every, um, you know, they, they had her box that they had for 
all the bills that were, and she would read every one of them. It was, it was they say she was incredibly informed. Interesting person. For a person who supposedly didn't have any power, she had a lot of power. About 96. 70 years on the throne. The only one other European monarch uh, out did her was um, Louis the Fourteenth. I was hoping she would live another two years. She lived another two years. She would have uh, outdid him. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> Louis the Fourteenth was a baby when he was put on the throne and he ended up living to a ripe old age. The longest living monarch in history, as far as I know, I think his name was Seti, which he was a, a, a Egyptian pharaoh. And he, uh, uh, 94 years on the throne, which is just incredible. You think about in that day and age, what it was, he was a baby when he was put on the throne and uh, lived to a ripe old age. I don't think that will ever be out done. Because in my life, in the longest reigning monarchs were Hirohito of uh, Japan, um, you had, um, uh, oh God, I, I don't even know how to pronounce his name. He was the, the, the king of Thailand. And then um, uh, then you had uh, Elizabeth. Elizabeth outdid the, the guy in Thailand and um, outdid Hirohito. Uh, but the, the only European monarch that lasted longer is um, uh, Louis XIV. And of course, Louis the Sixteenth is would, probably would have been his grandson. I think he lost his head, as we know. So he didn't live quite so long. <laughs> I need to start reading more history again. I love history. <laughs> I watched the, uh, the uh, miniseries that was on, what was it, Netflix, of uh, the, the Crown? That was actually quite good. They said the only president uh, uh, never bothered to uh, visit the um, Buckingham Palace was Johnson, Lyndon Johnson. That was interesting. All right, stepping back here, stepping back, oh, stepping back. I got excited there for a second. Sorry, I couldn't hold myself. Oh, it was so nice this morning. It was cool. And I just God, blew out the hot air that was up here in this house. It was just wonderful. Obviously, the sun's coming this direction, so this is going to get dark down here. Actually, I think I need to tilt down this just a little bit here. 
Yeah, that did work. A little further back, then. Hang on, don't get seasick on me. Okay. There we go. Ah, you can see my messy... Oh, well, who cares? Back in with my handy dandy sponge here. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder with the Nimrods we've had, and you know, I don't talk about politics, but with the Nimrods we've had recently, and uh politics, I mean, uh, you know, both Congress and everywhere, and it's like, maybe we screwed up and went in 1776 and we should have just stuck with them. to London one time. It's really interesting. You could tell at the time it actually kind of considered itself the capital of the world. Well, it's kind of true uh, about the Vietnam War is that but also, he didn't like royalty at all, though he was enamored by um, uh, her sister. So, who knows? She was on the throne for a long time. I, unfortunately, I think she was stuck by um, British law on that one. I, it was interesting. Yeah. Who knows? I mean, can you imagine though being born into that? All the all the rules and all the stuff that you just. 
you know, I, I wonder with some of them, they have a privileged life, but at the same time, they don't. They probably en envy envy the person that could just do whatever they want. I can remember it was, uh, I, I saw an interview with uh, now King Charles III, um, but uh, he was talking about a trip to, uh, uh, it was um, Pittsburgh, and they wanted, because he was really into architecture, and they wanted to show off the uh, skyline, and he said, we had this all scheduled, we had to go up to this high view, you know, and take a look at the Pittsburgh uh, uh, skyline, and he says, it was all fogged in. He said, but we had to go through the whole ceremony of the damn thing, and he was just talking about that's, that's the stupidity that we go through, is that you sit there going, you know, we can't see the city, so why are we doing this? Let's, let's, let's go look at photographs, or Whatever he said, but don't nope, nope, Everything was all planned out, you know. And I thought that was interesting what he was talking about. He said that's the rigors of, uh, uh, you know, they have a privileged life, but at the same time, they're really constrained. So I thought that was interesting. Sitting here talking so much that I forget to paint. <laughs> I think we're gonna. This is gonna be good. I have an idea where I'm going with this. So you're probably like, "Well, thank goodness, we don't know." I've just been fascinated with the newest pictures of Jupiter. You know, it's just like I. Oh, you know, we always thought it was like several bands of color, but it, in reality, it's not. It's just like this incredible, tumultuous uh, uh, gases going on. I still love that. Uh, I have, I, I, I used to have the book. Somebody kept it. Unfortunately for me, I let them borrow it, and they, they kept it. But of Cosmos by Carl Sagan, and it was really fascinating. They were. He, he actually had this concept. Of almost like jellyfish-like creatures that would live in the, uh, uh, the, the the atmosphere of Jupiter. I thought that was pretty wild. Start making this look three dimensional here. Now, seriously, can you imagine being born into that? Oh crap, I'm king. I always figured my 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 what I was supposed to be was born in fourth in line, so no chance of ever being king, fourth in line of a rich oil kingdom, and my job would be just to bore the crap out of everybody at some diplomatic party. Yeah, that was, that. I got in the wrong line. <laughs>
Pour myself another glass of wine here. It's a pre Friday. I am allowed to do that. <laughs> All right. I still think one of the most fascinating pictures I, are uh, not pictures, but looking through a telescope at the moon was, uh, it was a person right here in the Northwest District, and I, it was surprising he got that clear of a view from, uh, uh, you know, out right there in the street, but he had a huge telescope and he invited me to look through it. And it was one of those nights where the moon was, where you know how it is, you can see the whole moon, but it's a crescent moon. And, oh, God, that was fascinating. You, you could see the um, uh, the tops of the craters lit up by the sun. It was just fascinating. And another time, I was actually in Hawaii, and a guy invited me to look through his uh, uh, telescope he had right at Saturn. You could actually make out the moons and all the rings. It was just, wow. It was just so fascinating. I heard an interesting story about the water music. I don't know if you can confirm this, uh, Mark, but uh, for, I forget what king it was uh, that was uh, at, at the time. And they were pulling the, the barge with the orchestra on it up the uh, up the Thames, you know, and the rope broke. And so the, dam, uh, <laughs> the orchestra went one direction, the king went the other direction. It wasn't a good, good scene. <laughs> I don't know if that's a true story or not. Got this moon sitting here outside of this planet. Big gas giant. I wonder how many gas giants are in the universe. Probably billions. I think that's what a lot of people just don't grasp is that, you know, when you, you, you know, just like with the web telescope, you know, that it, it's, a, it, you know, how many, how many uh, galaxies they've already discovered? And you think about a galaxy, our galaxy alone, as far as they know, is, has about 400 billion, billion with a B stars. You know, and you think, let's say 1% of those, uh, the stars have planets around them. That's a lot of planets, you know. And I, I, I actually wonder if some people who, who actually want to defund and everything, all that type. Of, I'm getting on politics. I need to watch that. But um, is that they don't want people to know that? I'll get off politics. I, I, I stay away from politics. Politics, as you know, so. Oh, my God, there's Donna. Donna from Lincoln City. My gosh. Oh, I know. Literally two days, two days before she passed away, she brought in the new prime minister. That's the 15th prime minister under her. God, she's been around forever. God. They said 90% of the population of uh, Britain has never known any other queen. Is that amazing to think about? Wow. <laughs> it is. It's absolutely, absolutely amazing to think about. 
If I only could be on the throne for that long. Emperor Mike. All the dollar bills and everything would say, I like Mike. <laughs> Oh, really? Yeah. My dad's 87 and a half. He's a few years behind her, but uh, that's amazing. My grandmother passed away at 96. It's kind of scary to have some longevity in this this family. I got it coming down from both sides. It's like, oh. <laughs> it used to be a, a trap used to die of a heart attack at about age 65. Not anymore. I mean, we, we seem to lick that one. <laughs> All right. Let's get the science fiction version, uh, portion of this underway. Wow. Can't believe it. Looking at the time here. So. You just swung that up. That will work. Got to put our spaceships in here. Quake of Patrol ship. So this is the Quaken Empire that you're looking at here. That's the first one. Now I got um, Strauss going through my head. It's all your fault, Merrick. I want you to know that. Somebody's got to be blamed. It's going to be not me, of course. <laughs> Seventy years on the throne. God, who would ever? God, I couldn't imagine that. No more over here. Smaller ones over here. It'd be kind of fun to put you, Merrick, put you on a bike and then um, uh, take you up on that word and throw you off the cliff on the bike. Just letting you know. <laughs> I hope I've been told I'm too negative. <laughs> I 
Yeah, I was I was told that I was there's going to be an exception made in my uh, for me, so yeah, I'm not worried. <laughs> oh, that could be arranged, Merrick. No problem. I don't worry about that. I have connections. I have connections with people in the Philippines, in Indonesia. And a whole bunch of places where we have a lot of volcanic action. <laughs> you can you know, suddenly get thrown on a plane. Well, you know, you know that's going to happen. <laughs> now, I still, all kidding aside, Merrick, I can't believe that you could ride as far as you can on a bike. You know, it's like, oh, that's, an, that's very impressive. I just want you to know that. <laughs> But it worked. This is like a, a patrol ships here. Now I got Strauss going through my head. No idea why, but I do. So we're sketching all that in. Getting that in. Okay, let's. I think we have a chance of actually getting this done by. Uh, I'm going to have to take a picture of my mess over here. I'll do that. Why I'm always. Uh, can't use that Now, what an interesting life, though, she had. God, 70 years on the throne. Actually, you want to send it toward the sun. You don't need to have... Uh, you don't need to have the. Uh, I, I went through Mount St. Helens. You don't need to have the uh, ash radioactive. <laughs> Mount St. Helens was, whoa, that was a learning experience. <laughs> whoa. <laughs> you had the realization that just how much stronger Mother Nature was than anything we could put up. Whoa. it's possible when I come back on Saturday we, we'll get this done that's a good feel to it this one came out of the brain <laughs> I got it that hour God, how, how in the heck does that happen That's good for tonight.
<laughs> yeah, I, I, I lived through Mount St. Helens, as you know. I think I've told you that story. Well, oh, oh, oh Lord. <laughs> Why? You learn how little you are when that, when something like that goes off. God. That's, well, that's all I can say. I was 17 at the time, and they didn't think we we're going to. They didn't think we were going to survive it. You know, to be honest, you know that that's how serious it was. It was like, holy crap! Yeah, we could have all of our modern inventions and everything else. Didn't do much. All right. Kind of got the spaceship sketched in here real quick. It's a patrol of an area that they've had some problems with. <laughs> yeah. All right. On that note, I think I'm going to call it good tonight. We've got a good start on, uh, say, do this. A <laughs> uh, good start on this painting. Um, I'll be back on Saturday uh, at 11 o'clock in the morning. That's the plan. As you know, Saturdays tend to be, you know, but I, I, that's the plan. And so I'll probably do a pretty good job of getting this done uh, on Saturday. That's the goal here. And I want to do one more, one more science fiction painting for the show. Probably going to be kind of a Portland theme, but uh, right now I wanted to do a uh, uh, something that's uh, not not necessarily related to Portland, maybe more of the Quavian Empire. So, take care. Seriously, thank you so much for joining me. Stay healthy, stay safe. Thank you to the healthcare workers and all those people keeping things going. Thanks, thank you so much. You take care. I uh, would plan to be back on 11 a.m. Saturday uh, Pacific time. All right, take care. Have a great rest of your day, evening, or wherever you are on this globe. Take care. Bye bye. Whoa! I oh, couldn't help myself. <laughs> yeah. Robust, you betcha. <laughs>